So everybody's gonna wanna just hear about the new sensor, right? That's really exciting stuff. I got an idea though. I'm thinking like, let's just put it right at the end and then everybody right. has to watch the whole video. Like as a reward and they, we won't put the timestamp or anything so they, they'd have to watch it to see it. Well, we have to put the timestamp in. That's just a courtesy to our viewers. Fuck you, Jordan. Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. And it's Jordan Drake here. Apologize. No, I'm good, actually. That uh, that outburst was totally... Okay, fine, I'm sorry, but only because I'm Canadian. So well, there's been a lot of Fujifilm announcements today, and we've been fortunate enough to have our hands on a pre-production version of the GFX 50S version 2, and also we've had our chance to look at the new 33mm lens. So we're not going to talk about this tonight. Check out our videos. We'd really appreciate that, but there's so much to talk yeah, about. Yeah, this is tonight. easily their biggest announcement that they've ever done. We, it was pretty exciting, so we decided to record late at night. Yes. Um, so it seems like you're on your way. I've been uh, dating. Drinking. towards having opinions. I'm an adult. And I'm gonna drive the bus tonight. Uh, but let's start talking about the GF lenses. Alrighty. Now I think the first thing we should talk about in the GF roadmap is actually the 35 to 70. Because you've used it. Because we've used it. And you know, I gotta be honest, when I first heard about it and then got it in my hands, I'm like, this is probably gonna be a cheap piece of garbage kit lens. Yeah, I mean, it felt fairly plasticky, even though it has a metal mount. But then I was reviewing the files and it is- Super sharp. Crazy sharp. Yeah. Um, focus looks good on it. Breathing's well corrected. I just, I can't wait to get this on a 100 megapixel body and see if it's gonna resolve that as well. But I mean, as a kit lens, this is one of my favorite ones I've seen so far. Very nice. I know some people will be thrown off by the variable aperture, but I absolutely think it's gonna resolve the 100 megapixel sensor on the GFX 100. Mm -hmm. No problem. We'll see. So the Fujifilm GFX series would obviously be a really good landscape camera. A lot of people are using it for that already. So it's nice to see that Fujifilm is concentrating a lot on the new lenses in their roadmap to appease landscape photographers. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So the first one that we've seen is they've announced that there is a tilt shift yeah. lens coming. We don't know the focal length or aperture, but they put it on the roadmap between 30 and 35 millimeters, which is perfect range. Um, so the one thing that I think is really interesting is a lot of people are using Canon tilt sure. shift lenses on it. It doesn't cover and the properly tilt though. works well, and, but you can only shifted a very small amount so there should be huge coverage on this you could do a really big shift with it and if they ever make a sensor bigger than 44 by 33 then you know that these lenses are going to cover it but every good landscape kit needs a good ultra wide angle range and right now you're kind of limited by the 23 millimeter f4 it's a good lens but it's a big lens and honestly it doesn't get that wide so very exciting that we have a 20 to 35 zoom it's going to yeah. give you that 16 to 28 kind of classic ultra wide range brilliant but we don't know the aperture. Yeah, that's the real question. So what I'm wondering is, are they gonna go with a fairly bright and huge, and I mean, look, the 23 F4 is a big lens. It is if big they lens. do that kind of range in an F4, it's gonna be giant. Or I'm, I'd am i kind of like to see like an F4.5 to 5.6, a little slower, like a travel ultra wide yeah. zoom, I think would be an amazing combo with like a GFX sure. 100S. But then you're dealing with the floating aperture. Not a big deal if you're stopping down for landscapes. I think they're gonna push an F4. Uh, I just hope it has filters in the front of the lens, not in the back. So we'll see if they can do that. But I have a feeling it's going to be really nice, but pretty bulky and pretty expensive. So the last lens that we're going to talk about in the GFX system. Chris, do you like bokeh? I do. I like the 110 millimeter f2. That's not going anywhere, right? Don't well, tell me it's not going anywhere. A 55 millimeter 1.7. Well, it makes sense because there's not a lot of lenses in that range that really do give you that shallow. Yeah, depth like of they field. have the 63 28, which is a yeah. great lens. But yeah, if you're looking for really shallow depth of field in a normal lens, and it's cool. This is going to be like a 45 millimeter equivalent, so even yeah, more like normal a, than normal. Like a 1.4, roughly, you know, equivalent aperture to a full frame camera. So makes sense, and it's nice that we actually have a lens that's been announced that actually they. Give of the aperture for. Wow, so. this is exciting stuff. Okay, so enough about GFX lenses. Let's talk about APS-C. Yep. There's a brand new, sort of, X-T30. Yeah, I think it's actually, a lot of people are like, ugh, it's just a new screen, just like some of the new Sony announcements. But honestly, the big upgrade is this has the same processor as the X-T4. And it was kind of tough because I love the X-S10 body. And it was kind of like, well, if you get the X-S10, you get the in-body image stabilization yes. and you get that new processor. So you're getting the better tracking autofocus, all right. the films simulations now it really comes down to like which body design do you prefer the xt30 with the classic dials and no ibis or the big slr style chonky boy with the xs10 i still would go xs10 because i want the ibis and i like the handling the sort of slr style design but i know that does fly in the face of the classic manual camera that fujifilm is kind of famous for making well the really good thing is this gives us an opportunity now to shoot that xt32 against the nikon zfc and they're both brand new cameras it'll be super exciting no one else oh, has thought it's gonna of this. be the zfc i don't care if it's it's worse, gonna I'm going to go for the ZFC. It's going to be a great episode. Stay tuned. So the next lens that's been announced is a lens that 
when you do the equivalent. It's on the way to be reviewed. Uh, you talk so about excited. it. I don't want to talk okay. about it. Yeah, so I am really looking forward to the 23 millimeter F1.4, which we all know is a 35 millimeter equivalent. I'm a looking great forward to reviewing that. Focal length. And I loved the original lens. Uh, it was very sure. sharp. And I was really shocked they said this has brand new optics on it. So yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, Fujifilm is doing a really nice job right now of updating a lot of their older lenses. So it makes sense that we now get to weather resistance in this thing, uh, a linear motor, which is going to be nice. So it should be faster focusing. We've reviewed other lenses where they've improved the formula and so far and so they've good. And they've all been great lenses. My one concern is uh, I did really like the focus clutch on the original. And right. with all of these lenses they're putting their linear motors in, they are so touchy in linear manual focus mode. Right. So I love using them in autofocus, but they're a pain in manual focus. Hopefully they can refine that on this. Yeah, I don't have to deal with that issue. That's completely your problem. Right. Well, why don't you talk about a photography yeah. lens? Oh, okay, fine. Now, because this is videography, we have to worry about continuity, which it's I think my heart a real is problem facing the wrong way. There we go. Okay, but let's talk about photography where we don't have to worry about continuity because we have a very exciting lens coming out, a 150 to 600. Now, I feel like we've been reviewing a lot of 150 to 600s from other companies, but it's great to see Fujifilm doing this because so far you're kind of limited to the 100 to 400. My only question is, is it going to be a floating aperture? Is it going to be a fairly compact lens? Is it going to be affordable or wildly expensive? We don't know. We don't know the aperture at this point. And remember, this is on APS-C, so that's a 900 millimeter equivalent, which is going to be really impressive. I think. I think Fujifilm's got to get on top of this because Tamron has announced that they're going to start making lenses for XF format. Now, we tested their 150 to 600. They have not Excellent talked lens. about anything like that going to XF format. And Sigma has been making hints too. They might start producing stuff in XF mount. So, uh, Fujifilm, I would get that lens on the market ASAP. Another thing they should really rush out to market is the 18 to 120 because video is everywhere. <laughs> it's really hot right now. And they're saying that this 18 to 120, we don't know the aperture again. That's that's the game they're playing, but it's going to be a more video optimized mm -hmm. lens. And I thought that was going to be the 16 to 80 a couple of years ago, right. but it turned out like when you zoom, the focus would really shift, exposure could be, it just wasn't great while you were rolling, where this one I'm hoping we're going to get like breathing correction, maybe something like a power zoom would be really interesting on it. We'll right. See. But here's the thing though, we've tested a few new Fujifilm lenses, and even though some of them are very well corrected for breathing. When you're manually focusing that linear motor, it seems to be pretty jumpy, right? You've right. had some issues with that. So this is gonna have a linear motor very likely. Mm -hmm. Are hoping... we gonna have that same jumpiness? Are they gonna somehow incorporate some magical clutch mechanism? I don't I know. I mean, yeah, they're saying no clutches with linear motors. I hope they find a way around yeah. that because it would be nice if it was a great manual focus lens, but time will tell. All right, well, we've basically got through it, so I think it's time for me to relax. Thank you very much. And have the um, big news? Yeah, the big news. So, I mean, they did tease that there was going to be a big announcement at this X Summit, and I was like, they're bringing out Nostalgic Neg for all the XF cameras. It's happening, it's happening. It's not happening, but every... <laughs> not happening. But what they did announce is we are getting a new sensor. It yes. is going to be a stacked, yes. backside illuminated yes. X-Trans filter yes, array preach. APS-C sensor <laughs> in an XF mount. Right, and this is awesome because the 26 megapixel sensor they already use is not stacked. It is backside illuminated, but it is a very fast readout sensor, and that's actually given them a lot of advantage as far as shooting speeds and video capabilities so totally. this should just up the game well and i don't know exactly who's going to provide this sensor I it might be sony and if we look at what they've done with the a1 and if this thing's aps-c it could read out twice as fast right. as that so you know we could be looking at like 60 frame per second shooting rate. Shutterless like camera, 4K, no more mechanical. Just all kinds That's of really interesting video stuff. stuff. No, it's the photography. I, I think they might actually release like a couple bodies with this. Like right. one more video centric with like, you know, a fan would be really nice. I'm a guessing. cinema version. Yeah, uh, and then probably like a pro sports photography version as well. I think that would make a lot of sense. But I mean, if this sensor does what we think it could do, it could open up a ton of, they could do like computational photography stuff like your phone, but with an APS-C sensor, it'd be amazing. Very exciting. So, you know, hopefully it all comes to fruition, but really probably the most exciting news we've heard from all the announcements. Okay, I'm gonna scooch over to the side here and you can say bye to our viewers. Okay. Well, a lot of exciting announcements. And of course, do subscribe to the channel because as we get this gear, we are definitely gonna review it. So stay tuned, you don't wanna miss that. Do check out deepreview.com. There's fantastic articles on all of these new releases as well. And thank you so much for joining us. From myself and Jordan, have yourself a great night and we shall see you soon.